ready for, uh, I don't know, 10, 11, 12 minutes more monotonous moving letters with the train. Um, you know when you think about it, I kind of understand that they did kind of monotonous puzzles like this, I mean, like even playing through this game, you know, basically off of memory, it's really um, not a whole lot of fun being able to just complete it all in, you know, an hour or so. They spent, you know, I'm sure years making it. So what fun is it to solve it? I mean, yeah, I know you're wrong, it's kind of fun to solve it in, you know, a few hours not a whole lot of personal satisfaction in it. Then again, they made their millions off this game and they probably don't care how quick it takes you to solve it. Uh, I remember reading an article, it was back when I was in high school, I played this game in middle school, played the seventh guest, I think in elementary school. By the time I was in high school, um, Company had gone, the trial by the company that made this game had uh, gone under. So they've had a lot of internal conflicts, power struggles. All in this small company in Oregon, I think, is where they were. I remember reading an article online about it in high school. It's it pretty disappointing because I was hoping for a uh, seventh guest of three. Who knows? It's my understanding that one of the, the co founders, his name's Rob Landeros, uh, kind of started the company up again. I know, this, I know they've been doing things. They um, they re-released 7th Guest and 11th Hour for uh, you know, the new, the current versions of Windows, you know, Windows 7. Um, I believe they released a port of 7th Guest for the iPhone and iPad on the, um, I don't know, the App Store or whatever. It's called for whatever Apple calls theirs. I don't know. I, I don't have an iPhone, so I don't really pay too much attention to it. I think it was pretty disappointing. I never really tried any of their other games. Um, I was or two in the article said so they made a game that was called like I think it was like they were making a kids game called like Uncle Henry's Playhouse or something. Hey, and look, I clicked the wrong thing. I forgot to click it or click it twice or something. on isolating that use, so we can get to the back anyway. Um, the release of this game was basically a 7th guest and 11th hour puzzles, kind of dumbed down and repackaged as a kid game. <laughs> it sold like a grand total of like 47 copies. <laughs> Something abysmal like that. Um, obviously the big benefit, or the, I think what they'll be known for, what 7th guest will be remembered for, was really being um, the first game that made C uh, made CD-ROM uh, format that did just a huge medium for distribution. You know the way that the game combined video, um, puzzle graphics were amazing at the time. It was really you know groundbreaking stuff. Um, and obviously from then on they moved to obviously we see now you know, DVD-ROM games. It's probably just a matter of time before Blu-ray games come along. Obviously, they already have them for consoles. Um, they weren't really, obviously, they weren't CD drives for consoles back in the early 90s when they came out with 7th Guest. So, obviously, I remember learning a lot about CD ROM and DVD ROM DVD in college. It really is an untapped medium that really hasn't, I don't, I don't think, it's seen its potential yet as far as you know, the number of interactive movies and stuff that could have been produced that weren't. Obviously, you'd have to go straight to DVD with those, but still, maybe over time, as, as Blu-ray gets more popular, they'll look into that sort of stuff. Anyway, um, it's the long and arduous process of trying to isolate the U here. And, um, I actually think I'm doing a pretty pissed poor job. On my, based on my thinking before, but um, what we're going to do now, I think this is the point where it's clicking in my head that if I put the S there, I can put the T behind it, um, I can move the U down to the bottom track, shove the A to the back, then I will essentially have um, the 
you isolated. There, from there I should be able to um, put the A, or I'm sorry, the U on the top track. Um, everything else behind it, move everything else behind, um, or to the bottom track, and then slide the U back next to the F. And once we have that, um, the other letters will be arranged in a way where it's basically just a matter of going down, getting them, taking them to the top, pushing them back. Um, unfortunately I'd say we're probably still good. Five, seven, eight minutes away from that. Kind of tempted to take a nap, but this video is going to be done in about a little over ten minutes, so it wouldn't be really prudent. I'm also afraid to alt tab out of Premiere while I'm recording this narration. I'm afraid it will stop. <laughs> I'll have to reorganize my thoughts. Do you like cream soda? <laughs> this is probably the lamest Let's Play of all time. I haven't really seen a whole lot, but um... Yeah, it's my first. Bite me if you don't like it. Alright. Got the A. Drag the A to the top, and then go get the T and the S, and put them on top as well. Once they're on the top, I can move them to the bottom one, the bottom, the U to the back behind, or in front of the F. This whole puzzle, it's like a lot of moving stuff to the top, or moving stuff to the bottom, so you can move it to the top, so that your original starting positions will, will be clear for you to, to put another letter. So I gotta switch the track, move it back. This whole puzzle, I think, was like over 25 minutes. I think the whole rest of the um, this act doesn't take a whole, a whole lot longer than that. Unless you count the, um, it's actually probably shorter if you don't count the, um, you know, the long video segment at the end that we have to watch. On a side note, I just realized uh, before recording this narration, after you know finishing everything we've done so far. That, um, my YouTube account can actually do videos longer than 15 minutes. I didn't really get the memo that it was <laughs> that it could be longer than 10. So, um, yeah, the, those videos earlier they're all a lot shorter. Um, won't be making those anymore. Also, if anyone has any ideas, if you're actually enjoying this, if you're actually watching it, um, leave a comment or something. That'd be appreciated. Of course, I'm asking for comments during the most boring puzzle in the freaking game. And yeah, by the way, it's late at night and there are people now sleeping, so that's why I'm not louder. <laughs> I don't really have a naturally loud voice anyway, but whatever. I'll admit I am having fun making this video, making these videos, so I'm trying to think about what game to do next. Um, I kind of like to do this for seventh guest. Uh, what I'm leaning towards doing, though, is a game called Missing Since January, which I played. It's a it's a puzzle game, but it uses the internet a lot. Of course, this game, you know, was basically designed to be played. You didn't need to really. I mean, they didn't really. Have, I don't even think they even had Google back then. They didn't. Um, so you couldn't really Google solutions. I think they wanted you to buy the strategy guide from Crown Books or whatever was big back in the 90s, Super Crab. I think I had Barnes & Noble back then, too. Um, but yeah, I'm thinking about this game, Missing Sense January. It's basically, it's very internet dependent. It's a puzzle game similar to this. It obviously a lot lower budget, though, but it also uses, um, I'd say a good deal of video, probably about as much as this game. Alright, see here now. We're moving stuff to the bottom to get the U in the back by the F. It's a fun game, Missing Since January. It's most people haven't heard of it, but I played it 
actually played the sequel to it, Evidence the Last Ritual, before I played it, and then I played it, and then the expansion pack to it, um, 13th Victim, which was actually... It's kind of enjoyable, but some of the puzzles and some of the things you were supposed to find on the internet were just so freaking hard and obscure that it really took a lot of the fun out of it. But anyways, um, let me know if you have any ideas. I know it's kind of lame, but I kind of like playing these classic games. Give me something to do. on the bottom now. Uh, we're going to be putting the A down there. And then, uh, hey look, I didn't hit the track. Awesome. Way to focus. So I'm going to have to go forward, and then back, and then forward again, because it won't take the A with me the first time. And we're going to have to click the track, and drag it back. Good news is <laughs> we're almost done with this puzzle. As you can see now, though, um, we've got the A, T, and S on the bottom. We can move the the U back, and obviously it's very good news because uh, S T A U F stuff is the solution, and then we've got the A, the T, and the S, which they need to go back in that order. So it's just going to be a simple matter of a uh, Hooking up to it, dragging it to where it needs to be. Yep, all the hard work's done. Now it's just a matter of clicking and waiting. I was early when I started doing this video, I was using DOSBox to uh, slow down the animations, um, particularly when you navigate through the halls and make them slower. Um, then eventually I just decided to screw it. Um, that's one thing about this game. Um, the animations, I saw if they were videos that were recorded without sound, they tend to play back extremely fast. If they were recorded with sound, um, they, they play back at, at the rate they're supposed to. Um, the prime example of that is the shortcut, or not the shortcut, but the secret path we took earlier, the secret passage to go to the gallery, and then you go through the grandfather clock in the foyer. That plays, no matter what settings you have tweaked, that will play back at the rate it's supposed to because um, it makes some sound when you touch the chimes when you go on the clock. Unfortunately, pretty much all the puzzles, they've all got sounds associated with their animation, so they play back in real time. But it would be nice for puzzles like this would go super fast. Perhaps we saw that um, you know, navigating through the halls and the opening video it's, it plays a lot faster than it's supposed to. A lot faster than it did in the 90s, that's for sure. Alright, there's the T, we have but one letter left. And this section right here would be complete. Finally. The good news is uh, all the, the rest of the puzzles in uh, this act are nearly as hard. <laughs> I mean, they don't nearly, they don't take nearly as long. The difficulty can be. Say that maybe some of the other puzzles are more difficult. They don't take nearly as long. The, the ones where you have to play against stuff, obviously, very difficulty. Um, and there we are. Ha! Huh. You solved it. We now did. that's a switch. Oh, don't talk about trains right now. Let's look around for. Or, you know, nothing there, but it's beckoning me to go forward. So let's see. It's a box. It's another secret passage. A pole. And it drops in the game room. I don't even think I knew about that. Um, I really, I really don't remember or seeing that before. But we're gonna have to go all the way back up to the attic because that's what we're, what we're looking for is there. Our academic penthouse. I do like how in this game, I don't actually say that meaning I don't like it, it's, it's extremely annoying. So many doors are like open or ajar, and the game won't let you access them yet. 
least in Seventh Guest, all the, all the doors were closed. So it made sense if you couldn't get in, because you could just assume, oh, hey, they were locked. And this note, it's open. We just can't get in for whatever reason. Carl's just inept or something. Right, where the heck it is? It, I thought it was. I think it's to the right here. So I'm gonna see if there's anything I can click on. Um, there we go. We got our chess pieces. There's our rook. That's what we're looking for. So that's another real time scene. There's us in the attic. Please, please don't hurt me. Oh, must be Samantha. No, no more. I'm not gonna hurt you. Reach into the nothingness of the blue screen. Where's Eileen? <laughs> I don't know. She ran away and left me. I couldn't move. Stop asking for help. That's her. It's all my fault. Okay, next video.